We're doing the challenge shuffle Easter egg boys. We're just now jumping into the map right now. I have never ever beaten this Easter egg ever. I have never beaten it. I have tried it a lot, but I've never beaten it. I've been preparing for this. I have specific cards in my stack to help me get this done way easier. I heard there's a glitch, a god mode glitch, but I'm not doing that. I want to do this legit. I have a plan to get this done as easily as possible. I'm going to shoot six times and punch him. So I honestly just want to kill all the zombies right away and start opening things up. So after I ended the round, I went outside and I put two of the puzzle pieces for the toy robot trap down on the table. And I also checked for the flyer spot that is outside the room, but it wasn't there. And then I went to the next door and I opened it and I also grabbed two of the boom box puzzle pieces and I put them down. I then ended up filling my fate and fortune card meter and I used this card. I'm going to immediately use scope dollars so that it'll be ready when I get a sniper. I then went to the next round trying to get points for the doors and stuff like that. And then I ended up getting a max ammo and I took advantage of it. I used most of my pistol ammo to get a bunch of more points. And then I was like, yeah, I want to play this safe. I do not want to risk it. I'm going to go grab a gun. I was going to grab the UDM. It's right here. It's 750. It's a little like machine pistol and it's pretty freaking useful this will help me just protect myself pretty much on this part of the video i pretty much just finished making the boom box and i grabbed it and i opened the next door perk insured pimp slap coupon clipper and skull hacker those are the cards i have yeah we're gonna hack the ghost and skulls machine and we're gonna use that to get the perkaholic to do the perkaholic easter egg i don't know if it does it on the other maps but on this map if you do the ghost and skulls machine it makes all the weapons in the mystery box pack a punch which will make it really easy for us to get set up so we're going to do the skull hacker as soon as possible and it's literally right up here all i gotta do is buy this door and i'm right there and i looked up a video right before i started recording this to know how to do the game inside the machine on this part of the video i pretty much just ended the round and then i opened the door behind the disco room area that leads outside and i put down two of the puzzle pieces for the sentry gun and then i sat around in the disco area waiting to do the ghost and skulls machine thing and then i was ready i've never seen what it does whenever you use it I'm assuming it's just gonna give me all the skulls and it's gonna light up like it would if you were to actually do the easter egg this is one of the most OP cards in this game bro I have eight of them I got lucky of my freaking stuff bro so I can just go in oh it didn't give me the skulls but it packed the machine like it said I literally have to just get groups of three on these little blocks up here that's all I gotta do is get groups of three and just survive during this moment i started getting my yellows and greens mixed up because they looked so similar and then i had just realized that there was even strikes in this game and i knew if i got one more thing wrong i was gonna lose my perkaholic in that moment i knew i needed to focus up and not miss a damn thing okay i got that now it's gonna give me more is it yep now i understand the game more that i've tried it myself i don't have a certain amount of time that i have to complete this in so i can just play it safe there's that. Okay, do we have another one? Yes, and it's gonna be more. Now they're like even more stacked. Okay, put a red right there. Oh, I just got hit by that thing, but I got back up. My strikes went away when I completed that, that set earlier. There's a strike. I think if I get three strikes, it kicks me out of the machine. And that's how I lose it. Oh, I gotta put a red right here. Green right there. There we go. Oh my God, no. Okay, those things, even though you go down, you don't actually lose. It's just wasting your time. Maybe there's a limit on how long I can be in here, I don't know. Wait, actually I just noticed that the skulls are actually moving back farther. And there's a portal, and if they go through that portal, I'm betting you that's that's how you lose. That's another way you can lose. Oh, I won. Okay, let's go. That wasn't that bad, but it was kind of stressful. And there I got all the perks, and it's round four. That card is pretty much perkaholic. You just gotta earn it by getting in the machine and doing it. Not only do you have to earn it, but it's perma perks. Like these are permanent. If I go down, I'll still have them. The only one that's not permanent is up and atoms. That's because I'm on solo, and those are pretty much my lives. I know if I get a freaking meal kick weapon and I go down. I'll still have milk cake, it's just I'll lose the weapon. After I finished talking about all that, I pretty much just ended the round and then I opened the door to the roof.
Oh yeah, there's the ghosts and skulls thing that I was talking about. You see how it's green now and there's the skulls floating above it? The ghosts and skulls skulls. Every weapon is now pack-a-punched one time in there whenever I use it. And it's the same price to get it. It's still 950. The next thing I did was turn the power on and then I started heading back to the dojo to get my chi because on round five, that's when you're able to get your chi. And I needed it to open up the medallion type thingies and the teleporter doors. Also, I need to level up my freaking chi for the first step of the Easter egg. We need to get the chi. I'm gonna get the dragon one because I like this one. I need to talk to her first so I can get it. Dragons over here. After I got my chi, I went around the map and I made sure that I got some stuff done that I needed to get done. I opened the door to the back of the subway. I turned on the last power switch. I grabbed the token underneath Tough Nuff. I grabbed the last toy robot puzzle piece. I grabbed the reels and I grabbed the flyer. I think I have everything open that I really need to have open before I use this chi. Let's go ahead and use it. Get that open. Let me get XP for it, so gimme gimme. I am trying to get max rank in this game. I love this game that much. And I'm trying to max everything out. On this part of the video, I saved some zombies and I pretty much went around the whole map opening everything up. Like the Pack-a-Punch, the teleporter doors, the medallions, everything. Once I was done, I came back to the strip club so that I could do this. Oh yeah, the alien fuses. Let's do that right quick. We can do it with the chi. So I gotta hit this button in here and then leave. Then run over here to this teleporter. And this little box on the wall will be open with the alien fuses and I grab them. And then I gotta go down to the subway and place them on the train tracks to charge them up. The train just passed. So perfect. I can go down here and not feel like I'm gonna die. Place them right here on the electricity and then when the freaking train runs over it, it'll charge them up. I actually like this Easter egg, this little side quest for the alien fuses. It's simple, easy to do, and it actually makes sense. There's some logic behind it with the electricity on the ground and this thing running it over. It's like the friction from this train and the electricity that's also right here combined charge these freaking fuses up. I actually like that. I like when Easter eggs make sense, you know, because it allows the player to discover it in a way where it's like interesting and it, it's not like stupid hard to do. Oh, I wanted to show you this. I remember telling you guys in the my rave video that the symbol would be there and there it is. There's my rave symbol. It's right there. The Shaolin one's going to be up there. I just love seeing that because it's like my progress tracker pretty much like showing me like I've gotten those Easter eggs done. Can't wait to see when I have all of them done and to get all the rewards for it, bro. I've never had those rewards and I've always wanted them. Like the director's cut and just like the individual rewards for each map. Okay, so on this part of the video, I pretty much went around the whole map and I finished making all of the buildables and I opened the door that goes to the bar and the alleyway in front of the dojo. All right, we have all the buildables on the map built. They're kind of just there on standby for me to use now and they're actually pretty useful, especially the bone box and the toy robot. Those are the two best. Oh, that gave me an idea for a video, bro. Hold on, we gotta write that down. Okay, we're gonna go to the next round and we're gonna start this Easter egg. We need to get our chi to level two. Bro, I'm gonna check what that is. Frags. Let's go. Right now it's a skater round. I'm just gonna kill them. I'm not gonna worry about them. Actually, can I punch them? Cause I have like all these perks. Nope, I'm not even gonna try that. Planet smart. But that's the biggest problem with this Easter egg is dying too much before I get to the boss fight. Get them all grouped up nice and tight together. Just start running around in circles really quick. Okay, there we go. Gotta get them grouped up again. I'm gonna take my time with this. Oh my God, get them real grouped up again. Look at my points, bro. Oh my God. After I got finished building points with my pistol ammo, I tried to start leveling up my chi and this happened. Just hit one. Bro, I hit one zombie and they all just died. Was that one of my perks doing that? Uh, that don't make no sense to what just happened, bro. But okay, y'all saw that, right? I've never had that happen to me. I did not want to end the round. Well, at least I got the challenge done. Because of the infinite ammo power up I just picked up, I was able to get two full mags of pistol ammo. And since the round just ended because of whatever the heck just happened, I was like, well, hell, I'll go down there and get some more freaking points. I'm gonna use all my pistol ammo. And then I'll use the pimp slap card and punch him now that it's the next round. All right, I'm using pimp slap. Okay, does it do 130 points? Yes, it does. 
Let's go. This is my first time using this card. The good thing about this card is that it lasts until the end of the round. So I just kept on punching them and getting 130 points per kill. Big brain strats, bro. I bring this card for that exact reason. I'm gonna leave two of them. Gas grenades. I will take that right now. I definitely want to double pack a punch these. And I do need an explosive for later in these trade. There's one little step where I do need an explosive. And I just traded out my frag grenades, so... Might as well get this done. Let's go. Double pack a punch candles. Boom. Another reason why I did the perkaholic thing is because I wanted to save as much money as I could to use on the box. Because I'm trying to get the mauler out of the box. And remember, we got the ghosts and skulls thing. So now it's pack a punch immediately. Wh whatever I grab out of the box is pack a punched immediately. So even if I don't get the mauler, I will get something pack a punched. We still haven't used our scope dollars. I just noticed that, bro. On this part of the video, I pretty much made sure that I was ready to go for this first step of the main Easter egg. I'm going to go hit one of these rat cages and get it started. Oh yeah, I gotta talk to Pam Greer to get it spawned in. This is pretty much the first step of the Easter egg. The one that terrorizes these streets. Now that I've talked to her, the rat cages have spawned in. So this step, I pretty much gotta hit the cage and follow this rat around the map. And I gotta keep track of where he goes, because if I don't hit the rat cage, I have to restart this whole step. Pretty much each cage that he goes to, I have to hit. You can start with any cage though. It also helps to know all the freaking locations on this map just in case this rat walks through a door you haven't bought yet. So you can kind of like predict where he's gonna go. Yep, just like I expected him to do, go straight to that one. Now he's gonna go back this way. He's probably gonna come to this cage. Okay, no, he just went to there. Okay, now where is he going? He's coming up here. The freaking animation on this rat, I won't lie, is funny. At least it works and you know what you're looking at. Is he going in the bar? Watch, he's gonna go to this back room. I remember doing this now, like this Easter egg back in the day with my friend. And I swear, I would always hit this one right here. And I swear if you hit a certain cage, the rat always goes a certain route depending on the cage you've hit. Cause I remember this route. I'm starting to have like that deja vu right now yeah and he comes back out this way and he's gonna go down to the freaking spawn room watch i'm so confident that i'm just gonna stand by it look at him he's coming little rat on his way see i knew and then it's gonna spawn a circle here or no sometimes the circle has been here it's probably because i did another freaking cage back in the day okay i do remember him going back up these stairs actually now he's gonna go this way down this alley watch I swear I remember him going to bomb stoppers back in the day. Like going up the stairs and into the cage that's up there. Watch, what if I call it? Oh, I told you, bro. I'm gonna just listen and see if I hear him go in that cage. If you listen closely, you can actually hear the cage shut. I think I heard the cage. I don't see him at all. I just did that really quickly and I would have saw him. And the circle's gonna be in this room. And that's why I would keep that door closed back in the day, bro. That's, that's part of the reason why I did it now, because I remember doing that. Now I gotta kill zombies inside the circle, which I'm gonna do right now. And then when the circle disappears, you have to uh, fight off ninjas. After going to the next round, I was curious to see if I actually had to kill them in the circle or not. So I tried killing a good amount of zombies outside of the circle, but it felt like it wasn't working. But then it felt like it was taking too many zombies to finish, so I thought maybe I had to use my chi on them while they were inside the circle. So I walked out of the room to get a refill on my chi, and then this happened. This is a bop. Oh shit, they spawned in. So I finished the circle while I wasn't in there. I've never had that happen. Yeah, the circle's gone. There's the key. Now we're on to the next step. I'm gonna be confident right now because I've done this so many freaking times. I know that you have to do this and open the locker. Then it's gonna give you some symbols to look at. If you actually translated that, it means something that is actually cool to know, but I don't remember what it says. All I know is that you have to go shoot these symbols around the map in a certain order. First symbol's over here, watch. This one right here. Here that symbol goes ding. So now I gotta come to here and I gotta shoot that one. And if I was doing it wrong, you would hear a big like a buzzer. And then you shoot this one and this one. It's that simple. 
It's that simple. That big gong means you just completed one of the phases of the actual main Easter egg. And now there's gonna be a Rat King symbol down here. And when we click X on it, the Rat King will spawn in, but I'm not gonna do that right now because we need to get a gun for that. This is my meal kick weapon. We'll switch out our UDM for something important like the Mauler or just a gun that I know is really good, like the VPR's one that I know is really good if I ever get that. I'll take that or the Mauler. The Mauler over the VPR though. And what mainly makes the Mauler so good is the Sentinel variant that I have on it. That makes it extremely powerful because you're shooting literally five bullets at once. My cheat thing just spawned back in. I'm gonna pick that up. Okay, I'm gonna try to get a little collateral. There was two zombies right there. After this, I tried to go and get a good weapon to fight the Rat King with, and I hit the magic wheel seven times before it decided to move. I ended up getting the 45 RPM as my primary, and I traded my sniper for the Widowmaker because I thought it would be better for scoped dollars. There's a teddy bear. Well, that's their version of the teddy bear, a little astronaut plushie. I then went and found the new magic wheel location, and I hit it two times and got this. The Atlas. Now that's actually a good weapon. Right here, I pretty much hit the magic well until I was out of money, and then I stuck with what I had. I don't think that's as strong as the one I have right now, so we're just gonna roll with what we got and do this next step. Watch, I swear when you use this zombie gun, it's like Vulture Aid. I never could understand it, and I finally figured it out one day. Watch, they'll try to come up to it, and it'll make them go away, but it's not as good as Vulture Aid. I'm gonna see how fast I can take him down, bro. Bro, I should be able to take him down pretty quick. It kind of makes them run away. It's not like exactly like Vulture Aid, but it kind of is the kind of the same concept almost. Now we got the eye, and that goes in the same spot as Zombie Gun, and we don't need Zombie Gun, so f that. Oh. Ninja spawned in. That was one ninja. Um, now that we have the eye, I think that's when we talk to Pam Greer. You must once again face your enemy. Okay, now I gotta scan a bunch of locations around the map with my eyeball. And I know all the locations by heart. So I should have an easy time doing this. On this step of the Easter egg, I have to find and shoot six Rat King symbols. There are 13 different locations and only one symbol spawns in at a time. These symbols cannot spawn in the same place that I've already found one. So the more symbols I find, the less locations I have to check. Once I have found all six symbols, I can then move on to the next step. Oh, there's a symbol. There's the first one. Now let's check this. One thing I do know is that the symbol will not be in the spot that you've already gotten one in. So all I gotta do is check the other ones. I actually kind of enjoy this step. The only annoying thing about it is having to run around the map. But I actually do kind of enjoy this step because it's simple and it's kind of enjoyable to get it done. For me it is. I know I'm like one of the only people that would ever say that. There's number two. Now let's check down here since we're right next to it. Fastest way to do it is pretty much just go to the location that you're closest to when you get your symbol. And a lot of it is RNG. I can see this being a speedrunner's nightmare. I don't think that when I scan right here that it's actually scanning the f cop car. Cause look, that square isn't meeting up with the cop car. I might have to open that door just to scan it. I'm gonna do it. since we already did that circle thing over there. We might have to do that circle thing again though. I, I know there's a step where the circles pop up again, but I don't know if it goes back to that spot or not. Okay, there's number three. After I got this symbol, I went and checked the location on the water tower and the next symbol was actually there, but I completely missed it because it was so hard to see. I then went around the whole map checking all the other locations and I basically got lost. I even started double and triple checking everything. Okay, I'm just gonna have to run through all the spots until I find it pretty much is what's going on right now. I kept on going through locations that I had already checked and I started to wonder if I was wrong. So I even checked a location that I had already found a symbol in. Bro, I already checked the water tower, but I'm checking again. <gasps> it is up there. I just didn't see it. That's number four. Okay, there's this spot right here. I just remembered this spot. Now on top of the vent. Like I can scan right here and then run over here and check. There it is. Five. One more. 
it's not there. Dude, that box effect looks so cool, bro. I love IW Zombies, bro. They did so well. Just like the design on this game is so freaking good. Oh, there's six. Now that we've shot in six symbols, the phone should be ringing down here. Or it should be ringing on one side of the map. Those are all red. The one that's ringing is going to be white. It can either be right there or it can be over here on the other part of the subway. If we hear it, we know we did it right. There it goes. Now we got to listen to the beeps for Morse code. So it's four dots and then a bunch of dashes and then three dots. And I have a cheat sheet on my phone that's from Noah J's video from a long ass time ago, his guide. I gotta basically figure out the three digit number by just looking at the dots and dashes. And I know that I heard dot 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 dash at the beginning, so it's a four for sure. And then I heard a bunch of dashes and then I heard dot dot dot. So I know the last number is a seven because that's the only one that ends with three dots. So our number is 407 because the numbers that are on this, the big three digit numbers that you see, those are the only numbers that we can get out of this so it honestly isn't that hard to do once you understand morse code but you got to think about the average person not knowing what morse code is so now we got to look for the poster on the map that says 407 this is 420 420 that's 596 i could see it down there yep once we find that poster 407 you grab it and that part of the easter egg is very crucial because if you grab the wrong poster apparently it'll ruin the whole easter egg and have to restart the whole thing so now we got to go to the top of the freaking dance floor building and we got to place this poster on this spotlight and then it's going to shine an x on that window over there because you see the x on the poster and then we got to shoot this with an explosive and sometimes it's kind of funky like that where it doesn't want to work and then ninja zombies are gonna spawn in and we gotta kill all of them. And then once we kill all of them, we can do the next step. And we're destroying them because we got this freaking gun, bro. Um, so this step is even more tricky if you don't have cheat seats. You thought the Morse code was bad, get ready for this. So on this step, the goal is to spell out a word by using these symbols that are scattered around the rooftop. The game gives you the first letter of the word, but you have to figure out the rest. Each symbol corresponds to a letter in the alphabet. So I have to look at a cheat sheet to know what letter each symbol is. When you shoot a symbol, it will either add a letter to your word or let you know that you are wrong by making a loud buzzer sound. If you are wrong, it will give you another word and you'll have to try again. If you are right, it will add that letter to your word and all the symbols on the rooftop will change for you to figure out the next letter of that word. And and by the way, there are only six symbols on the rooftop at a time, and they stay in the same spots. They just change every time you shoot one. The way I figure out what word it might be is by looking at the letter it gave me to start with and then looking at the cheat sheets that are full of a bunch of confirmed words that have worked for other people to see which words my word may be. Then I look at the symbols that it gave me and look at my other cheat sheet to see which letters it gave me and based off of all that information, I start making educated guesses. I tried my best to make this make sense it's just very complex but simple once you understand it now during this run i spent over 27 minutes failing each word it gave me again and again what i didn't realize until i got far into this is that my word was actually being reset not by me failing but because of me reloading with blue bolts for some reason, blue bolts reset your word when you reload while doing this step. And I swear I remember that you can actually fail this step. Like I swear there was a strike system, like three strikes you're out and then go to the next round to try again type of thing. But I never experienced that in this run. I also remember way back in the day, this blue bolts thing happened to me before. My theory is that this blue bolts thing was put in the game on purpose as a sneaky little way of making this step easier for those who figured it out. Who knows, maybe it's just some crazy glitch. 
but it is cool. After I went through all of that bullshit and realized what was going on with Blue Bolts, I finally started getting somewhere. I think it's Arthur. And Arthur is the name of the freaking Rat King. It's the name of the dude who is the Rat King, Arthur McIntosh. So that'd be kind of cool to have that word spelled out right now because he's like the freaking main antagonist on this map. And then after getting really excited about this word, this is how I f***ed it up. Ooh, that's the E. That's the E. Bro, I swear that was the E. Wait a second. Arthur's not with an E, it's a UR. I should have checked that. That was me being just confident and it didn't work out for me. Wait, so if I were low with blue bolts, will it reset it again? It did. So that is what it's doing, bro. So I can keep going to the next one with blue bolts. It didn't do it that time. Maybe you can only do it so many times. Or maybe you can only do it every now and then. Now it's a word that starts with T. Tiger is the only one that I see right now. Tiger and trees, bro. Okay, we're gonna look for the letter I or R, bro. That's what we're looking for right now. I know the letter I is the triple S thingy and the R is that cross. Uh-oh. We might've just got a letter that, oh, there's the triple S thing I was talking about. T I so G G I know where G's at. There's G. Well, I don't know where G's at, but I know what it looked like, and I just kind of just ran right to it, didn't I? I'm just psychic like that, bro. E letter E letter E letter E. There it is. R R the R is the cross. The R is the cross thing, you majigger. There it is. There's the gong. Tiger. Now we gotta go fight the Rat King again. And since we have a freaking good ass gun, we can go ahead and do that really quickly. I am really curious what happens when you use a Kung Fu sh on the Rat King. Is it good or is it bad? I'm not gonna punch him, I'm gonna throw a shuriken at his ass. As I was doing this, I noticed that he flinched and his shield and his staff literally evaporated as I kept using my shurikens on him. I've never used my chi on him before, so this was my first time ever seeing this. I also ended up defeating him faster. I mean, it does make sense for Kung Fu to be his weakness, if you know more about the story. I think that did a lot of damage to him. Oh, the round just ended. We had a brain. Oh, I remember this part. We gotta freaking get ready for a jump scare type of thingy. We gotta talk to Pam Greer, and there's gonna be this little black circle symbol that pops up in the top right corner. The enemy you faced possesses the final ingredient to the freedom you so greatly seize. Basically, somewhere in the next three rounds, we're gonna have like a little jump scare that happens. It's gonna teleport us to a specific part of the map and we're gonna have to defend ourselves. And I'm about to use my scalp dollars to get a bunch of points. One thing I just noticed is that I have perk insured and I was thinking about using it to keep my perks. And then I realized that the perkaholic Easter egg makes to where your perks are permanent. So I don't really need that. So it's kind of a, a waste. Scalp dollars, these babies. Oh my god, look how much points I just got. Oh, I think because I'm using a gun that has, has like a burst sniper, it's counting as like multiple kills for the card because that card's going down fast. Oh my god. Okay, line them up again. We can get one more out of this. I just got like over 2k in one freaking pull of the trigger. Oh my god. We just got a lot of money. Okay, let's go hit the box and see if we get luck and get the mauler, bro. I went and hit the magic wheel three more times and then it moved. I then went and hit it two more times and then I grabbed this. That is the raw, I want that. I feel like this does more damage than the one I just traded in. After this, I basically went and I spent all of my money on the magic wheel trying to get lucky and get the mauler. And then I killed all the zombies except for one. Okay, now we have more money. I'm gonna hit this box and then I'm gonna kill this zombie. Actually, I'm just gonna go and kill him. Let's go to the next round and make things faster. Because right now we're just trying to get to the jump scare. And at the beginning of each round, that little symbol is gonna pop up on the right again. It's letting us know like, hey, something's up. Imagine being the first ones to do this and not knowing what that means. And you're running around the map trying to figure it out. And then you get jump scared like a couple rounds later. While I was waiting for the jump scare, I decided to spend the rest of my time upgrading my chi. So I went through a whole round just using my shurikens. And then the next round, I got my chi power. 
I used all of my chi on that round, and then I decided to do this. Bro, I'm gonna be that guy, and I'm gonna walk around in circles until the, the kung fu ship spawns back in. Yup. I literally spent like the next five minutes waiting for my chi. And when it spawned back in, I used it on the rest of the zombies and I got it very close to fully upgraded. The next round happened to be a roller skater round. And after I finished it, this happened. Reload. My max ammo. See, it spawns us right here. It's like a little ambush attack, but it's not like that challenging. And then you grab that part and you run down here and put it right here, um, right here. After I did this step, I decided to go ahead and just upgrade my cheat all the way real quick. All right, get it to the max level and then we're gonna do the next step. This is the part of the strike where I'm kind of like not sure exactly what we need to do. Now we have this maxed out, but I'm gonna put it away. There's like this little area where we have to climb up and shoot a Rat King symbol. I don't want to F this up though. I don't know if there's like a particular way we need to do this. So I'm going to YouTube it real quick before I do this. But there's a Rat King symbol up in there that we got to shoot. Right here, I pretty much just figured out exactly what I needed to do to complete the rest of the Easter egg. And then I got straight back to it. So I do need to shoot this. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot it. And then it's going to shut that blind. This circle is going to spawn in like I said earlier. And we got to kill zombies inside of it. We gotta kill zombies until the circle moves and it's gonna go around the map in different spots and it's completely random where it can go. And I think he said you gotta do this like five times until uh, you hear a gong noise. And that's why I got these candles though, a pack a punch, because they're gonna make it really easy to survive doing this. There's that one gone. So it is like killing them inside the circle. There it is. This will be the second one. And then after this step, we have one step that's kind of challenging. If you don't know how it works completely, and I do know how it works, because I've tried it many times. And I'm going to do it. I think I got this. I just got to freaking play it safe and just do what I know I need to do. Okay, is it back over here? No, it's not. Is it over here in this little purple room? Because it can, just like before. Nope. The other spot that I know is over here in this area. Yep. Let's go. Dude, all these perks make me feel so fast because it's freaking racing stripes and like... I have... Bro, I just... I'm set because of that card, bro. That card saved me. Okay, and these pistols are saving me too. If it's not in here, it's in the spawn. It's in the spawn, bro. It can go back to the same spot. I do got a bunch of points, and we can use our points before we go into the boss fight to try and get that mauler. The mauler would make it much easier. There's a nuke. We don't want that. Okay, there's that circle gun. Oh, up here, up here. All I know is that we've already done it. It's like three or four circles, so this is probably the last one. Double pack-a-punch candles are making it so easy right now. Because we're on round 17, these things are just one-shotting. I did not hear the gong, so um, we got to go find it again. He said that there would be a gong whenever you're done with it. And I do remember there being a gong when I did it a long time ago. This is my first time doing this step right here in years. This has got to be the last one, bro. I just saw that Rat King symbol on the wall, bro. There's Rat King symbols all over the place. There's like stuff on this map that I just never noticed because I don't pay attention. There's the gong. Now we got to go to the disco area. This is the step I would say is probably one of the hardest steps. If you know how to do it, it actually ain't that difficult. So I got to go activate this disco ball on the disco floor by pressing X on this. Now one of the zombies is going to be dancing with a disco ball above his head. And we got to get zombies that are standing on the dance floor and then kill this one. And it'll transfer to that one. But you have to make sure there's always a zombie on the dance floor whenever you are doing that. I'm glad I have Perkaholic, bro. I'm gonna do this. I have an idea. Okay, grab up and Adams. Luckily, our meal kick weapon was a sniper. See, I still have all my perks. So no worries. That was my first down. I'm gonna use the boom box to do this really quick. Watch. So what I can do is place it on the dance floor. And then like... Like this. Watch. And then they'll all get around it, and then I can kill the zombie that has that on the head. Kill that one. Kill that one. Kill that one. But I gotta hurry to finish this. There's the gong. I did it. I did it. Now I get out of here. 
And there's the Rat King symbol. I gotta fight him one more time. Okay, now let's save a zombie before we do this. My heart, bro. I have not beaten this Easter egg before. Like, I've never beaten it, and I can't wait to just... Hey, it done! Bro, you know that feeling when you're like trying to beat an Easter egg and you finally get it done and you're like, oh my god. That's why I love the old Easter eggs because they're actually challenging and I feel much more rewarded when I and accomplished when I beat it. It's like, yeah, I did it and not many people can do this because it's that hard and they would just rather give up on it. But I'm here sticking it through kind of thing. That's how I honestly feel about it. I wonder if any of you guys relate to that. After I had my little moment there, I went to go hit the wheel to see if I could get lucky and get the mauler. Give me a new pair of shoes. I kept on hitting the wheel, but I was also trying to save money for double pack a punch and I didn't want to push the round too high. So I was trying to not waste all my money this round. And when I was about to stop hitting the freaking magic wheel, this happened. I'm hit the box one more time or two more times. I want to make sure that I can double pack a punch at least by next round. <gasps> We need to have this as my um, main weapon right now because this is really good. This gun does a lot of damage, bro. <gasps> Don't tell me that's what I think it is. You and I. We just hit the jackpot. The Mauler and the VPR? The VPR is in my main slot, which is scary because I want the Mauler in my main slot. We just can't go down in the boss fight, all right? All right, let's do this. Rat King, where you at? Destroy his ass. Oh my god, the Sentinel Mauler. Watch out for ninjas. We got him, we got him. That's how good the Mauler is. We just did it that fast. Now we gotta kill these ninjas. It's gonna end the round, but we got the heart now. And all we gotta do is talk to Pam Greer. I'm not gonna talk to her yet because I'm gonna pack a punch my weapons. I'm gonna double pack a punch. And if you talk to her and then go down to this boss fight room, it'll start the boss fight and I don't wanna start it yet. So I'm gonna come down here and save money up and then when I'm ready, I'll talk to her. I'm gonna save up enough money to double pack a punch both my weapons. I went to round 19, but I still didn't have enough money. And then round 20 ended up being a freaking special round. So I had to go to round 21, but luckily round 21 was my round. Now let's go up here and double pack a punch both of these and then talk to Pam Greer. This is it, bro. This is the moment. This is where we shine. There's the Mauler pack a punch. Ooh. Dude, that's one thing I do gotta compliment right now. The camels on IW were fire. I loved how they also like really fit the theme of the map for each map. Like, oh my God. And I love how the double pack a punch is a completely different camo. I'm trying to think, do we want the toy robot or do we want the boom box? I want to use a toy robot, but then again, I'm like, I don't know. That toy robot can kill zombies, like a lot of them fairly quickly. You know what? I'm going to use it. This will be interesting. Now let's talk to Pam Greer and she's going to talk to us. And then we're going to go down to that room. And literally when we walk in that room, the boss fight will start. Your final lesson is at hand. Right. You must use all that you have learned, and together we shall end this, this night night. Let us return this darkness to the light. Okay, let's go. Watch, it's gonna start it when I walk in here. Oh, there we go. Pam Greer's down here, and so is the Rat King. This is the boss fight in the actual map. Here we go. Light his ass up. Just like we did before, just now we're in the real f shit. Okay, now, start this freaking eyeball one. Okay. Okay, now pull these out like we did before to make this way easier for us to freaking get this step done. On this part of the boss fight, all I have to do is shoot all these symbols on the wall. The trick is, is that they can reappear if you're not fast enough. So I have to get rid of the symbols before they start reappearing. Okay, that's that step done. Now the Rat King's gonna come down here, we gotta shoot him. Well, we're gonna start shooting him right now. I don't have to, you don't have to come down here. Okay, Pam Greer is teleporting right now. He keeps blocking and I'm waiting for him to unblock. Pam Greer sounds just like the ninjas when she's teleporting, so I kind of like look, but okay, there's the ninjas. Oh, and now they have the Rat King skulls because they're being controlled by the Rat King. Okay, I gotta focus his ass. Use the heart on them, like before. I just gotta keep shooting him. I'm not grabbing the max ammo until I need it. Right here, I didn't even notice that the gong had already gone off and that I wasn't doing any damage to the Rat King. Oh wait, no, the 
symbols pop up. I'm not doing a damage to him right now. Okay, now start it. Okay, now reload. On this part of the boss fight, I literally don't have to do anything besides run around in circles and survive. I honestly feel like this part was supposed to be different because it literally is pointless. I have all the space in the world to run around this room and survive easily by training these zombies up. And I don't have to do anything besides wait for it to be done. If it was hard to survive, I would get it, but I don't have any trouble surviving. I honestly feel like the devs were trying to do something with this step because there is this weird thing in the middle with the Rat King like attracted to the turn zombies, but they weren't able to make it the way they wanted it to be. That's how I honestly feel about it. That's how it feels when I freaking do this step. Like there was supposed to be more to it, but it doesn't work. Shoot the f out of him. It, I heard the gong and it's over. Laser his ass. Oh sh he just shot that at me. Okay, now watch myself, bro. I'm trying to get as much damage into him as possible. Oh, that I should have the gong and I'm not getting a hit marker. So now it's the heart step. Okay, save my ammo right now because this part can take a lot of ammo if we're not careful. Oh. No, I went down, but I have this perkaholic. Come on, revive me, please. Maybe this will work now because the zombies die instantly. Oh. This is the hardest part of the boss fight right here. I gotta get, I gotta kill them above the acid to get it to go away. But what makes it hard is that if I'm not fast enough, it'll reset. Okay, we just got those. Come on. There's that one. One more. One more. Oh, it's refilling. I need to grab up and Adams. I just realized that. Where is it at right now? Oh no. Why is it letting me grab it? Oh shit, that's kind of scary. Not gonna lie. Is it because I have Perkaholic? He's gonna refill it. Oh, I lost my Mauler because I went down. Oh f Right here, I noticed that my Kindles were low on ammo. That's why I didn't grab that max ammo because you never know when you're gonna need your ammo. No, don't do it! Don't die. It was at this moment I knew that I needed to focus up. Oh, I got it. Reload and grab this. Use the heart. F shoot the f out of him. Use the toy robot. Oh, oh, I did it. Oh my god, I was so scared I was gonna die right there. I got quiet. Thank you, my young apprentices. With the Rat King's demise, you now possess the wisdom, strength, and courage to move forward on your journey. I present you with this token on behalf of all of those that remain imprisoned. May it serve you well on the journey oh ahead. Namaste. Oh my god, that was so scary. She isn't coming along for the ride. All I know is if we catch him on the flip side, I'm calling dibs. Well, I guess it's time to grab that key and get my the hell out of here. Beating. Oh man, who the hell turned oh. all the color? That was our hint for the next map. Dude, 
IW Zombies is so good. I I did it. I did it. I'm back in the map now. Did you see? Did y'all see? How, oh, grab the soul key. The toy robot. Did y'all see how he was blowing them up like crazy? Helping the f*** out of me. But there's still more to this. And I just got an achievement. Was that the soul key? There's a reward for beating the Easter egg just like in Rave. And I've never been able to use this because I've never beaten this Easter egg. Oh my god. Oh my god. We can get that off the wall. The katana. But it's not letting me do it right now. So I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and grab quick revive. And I'm gonna save a zombie. I can just grab it. This is badass. Apparently it's 10 grand every time that I come into this map. Kirisute Goman. He just got sliced. Boom. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is so satisfying. Now let's try this. Oh, now it's like black. What is it called now? Oh, I got an achievement. Sliced and diced. And Shadow Shuffle Pack a Punch the final weapon. Oh, it's called Spires of Hell. It's kind of doing like that volcano card thing where it like it travels in one direction and they can kill more more than one zombie. Oh, you hit zombies to charge it up and then you can do that. Bro. And then I can double pack a punch it and make it even better. Oh, oh but there's clips for it. There's actually clips for this weapon, but that's for the ability. I can keep meleeing them no matter what. So see how it charges up and then you can just boom. Oh, so you charge it up by just using it. Okay, now let's do Dope Pack a Punch. Feral Instinct. Does it have a different look? Or maybe it doesn't even change the color. It just looks that way in the dark. Yeah, because it still looks like a normal katana. Oh my. It shoots out a tiger, like a ghost tiger. That kind of reminds me of the Dryzen Drag Spirit Dog. I've heard this is the best weapon on the map right here. I can kind of agree right now looking at it. Oh, yeah, I can totally agree. After this, I spent the rest of the game going for two calling cards. The Rat King Heart one and the Feral Instinct one. Because this was my prime opportunity to get both done. I know most people don't care about this kind of stuff, but I do. Because I love fully mastering games that I love. That's just the way that I've always liked to play games since I was a little kid. And so yeah, I'll let my past self take it from here. We did it, bro. We did it. Now I have that achievement. Now I have the soul key for it. Attack of the Radioactive Thing and the Beast from Beyond. I am coming for that ass.